Hello and welcome to BHS TV News. I'm your host Simon Abohasira alongside my co-host Ronnie Kane. Today we have coverage on the gymnastics team, new Netflix shows and a brand new episode of Word on the Street. BHS TV News starts right now. On March 3rd, an outbreak of nearly 40 tornadoes broke out across the southeast United States. The most powerful was an EF4 tornado, with winds reaching up to 170 miles per hour. Lee County, Alabama was the area hardest hit, where 23 people were killed. Almost 100 were injured across the whole region hit by the storms. Alabama Governor Kay Ivey has declared a state of emergency and FEMA is currently working to help communities rebuild from the devastation. Every month, Netflix adds new titles to stream. Here to help you find a new series to binge watch is Devin Doherty. With Netflix releasing all sorts of new TV shows, the average student has no idea which one to watch. Well, you're in good hands. Your very own news team has just the shows for you. Starting off, for those who like a good drama and will be just below an hour, Riverdale is just for you. Let's see what the community has thought of this riveting drama. I really like the show Riverdale because it talks about, you know, high school students and kind of what they go through and their struggles. And I feel like I can relate to that as well. And it's also a mystery and a lot of drama. And I'm really into mystery, so it's kind of just all in one for me. While navigating the troubled waters of romance, school and family, Archie and his gang become entangled in dark Riverdale mysteries. Overall, this is a great and riveting show to watch. If you think you've seen every show, the new show, Umbrella Academy, has been out for almost a month now, with a new season that will keep you on the edge of your seat. When a prestigious billionaire passes away, his adopted adult children have no choice but to all come home and be together once again. Let's walk around and ask the community for their input. I really like the show Umbrella Academy because it's really easy to follow and when it gets difficult to follow they explain it well in the next episode and it's really an interesting mix of fantasy and history and time travel. For a show with short episodes and good for binge watching, The Good Place has 20 minute episodes and is great to watch with little time on your hands. The Good Place is a show about the afterlife, so in this show when people die they are sent to The Good Place or the bad place, depending on what they do in their life. The plot of the show is centered around a character named Eleanor, who accidentally gets into the good place, making the perfect utopia go wrong. Having trouble in history class? Need to get an A on your test? Don't feel like studying? It's time for an educational documentary. World War I in color is a great way to catch up on history. Although you may not be able to get every detail on what you need to know for that test, World War I in color will bring you up to date on historical dates. What do our local historians think of this documentary? Okay, when I saw the uh, documentary, World War I, The Great War in Color, uh, I was surprised by the impact that it had on me when they transitioned from the black and white photos, the original photos to the color photos. It kind of had an impact on me, in a, uh, a sort of emotional, intuitive sort of impact. And, and, and that change that I had in my attitude kind of knocked me back a little bit because as a historian, I try to be as objective as possible about the observations I make, the historical observations I make. Uh, and, and, and that means taking me out of the picture. Uh, and that was hard to do. Here's to our honorable mentions. The Bloomfield Hills School's second annual multicultural event is happening March 18th. This will be an event to celebrate the many cultures in our district. There will be many exhibits and presentations showcasing the cultures here in Bloomfield Hills. Many cultures will serve complimentary food and there will be student raffles and a lemonade stand. This event will be completely free and there is no RSVP required. Be sure to join us for this event at Bloomfield Hills High School on March 18th from 5.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. Here at BHHS, our hall monitors work tirelessly every day to ensure that we go to a school in a safe and efficient environment. 
Here to profile some of our school's unsung heroes is Sophie Kay. Hello, I'm Sophie Kay and welcome to 60 Seconds. Today, I am inside of Bloomfield Hills High School exploring what really lies within these four walls. Let's begin. I decided to take my research right to the heart and core of Bloomfield Hills High School, the hall monitors, asking them what are their biggest pet peeves. My pet peeves are throwing food at each other just because or whatever. The kids just, just goofy boys, just goofy boys. You kids don't clean up after yourselves. Mostly the kids don't pick up after themselves. Second semester seniors, they're paying the butt. Because first off, they're great, and then once, eight, once spring break comes, they go downhill, and once Man of Nature does, they're completely checked out. Kids who drop off their friend and then just whip into the parking lot, just whip into the parking lot, just whip into the parking lot. Parents, they don't watch out. I've been hit almost three times. So we have certain kids that do their, they have to do their water fountain hit. They have to hit every single water fountain as they go around. Second semester seniors that are like, ha ha, making loud obnoxious noises just because they're second semester seniors. And they're tardy like, that's the new norm. I call it a hoot, what can I tell you? Tune in next time to 60 Seconds. I'm Sophie Kay. Tragedy struck on Sunday morning when Ethiopian Airlines flight ET-302 crashed shortly after takeoff, killing all 157 passengers on board. The plane was a Boeing 737 MAX 8, the same model as the Indonesian Lion Air jet that also crashed shortly after takeoff in 2018, killing 189 passengers. While the details of both crashes are eerily similar, no evidence has come forward to link the crashes in casualty. Our thoughts are with the families of the victims of this awful tragedy. Last week, four BHHS gymnasts qualified to compete in the MHSAA state finals. Here is Jack Brown with the story. The BHHS girls gymnastics team has completed its first season at a varsity competition level. We have interviewed several players, including the coach, on this very successful season, qualifying for state finals. It's been cool getting to know these young ladies. They're all, most of them are ninth and 10th graders, and to watch them grow from the beginning of the season and learning new tricks and becoming better gymnasts and learning to become a part of a team. It's been fun, and they have uh, made me laugh a lot this year. I came from competitive, and it was just like very, very different, but I really loved the new year, and I feel like I got so many new skills. And it's like really cool being like the first year of the team, because I made so many new friendships, and I feel like we're all so close. Yeah, I think my favorite part of the, like, the season has been like my teammates, because they were all like really nice and really friendly, and I got to know them so much better. I think it's really cool how like I get to take something that I've spent like a lot of my life doing and I would get to like compete for the high school. This season as a gymnastics team, first year, we've had had so many accomplishments. We just competed regionals and we got fifth in the our region, so that was really cool. So many of our girls have gotten first and we placed second multiple times working on the first. And I feel like adding gymnastics at BHHS is just a crazy big deal for us because it's just another sport. So if any of you guys want to join, please come because it's super fun and you don't have to be amazing. The team's hard work and dedication has really paid off, with four competitors qualifying for the state finals. Congratulations to the entire BHHS gymnastics team on a very successful first season. For BHS TV News, I'm Jack Brown. This year, the SAT for the juniors is set for April 9, 2019. With the time frame, content, and results, this is a big source of stress for many students. Here are some tips to relieve it and do your best on the test. Studying with friends is helpful because you can bounce ideas and questions off each other to make the session as efficient as possible. Be prepared with all necessary materials. Be sure to bring number two pencils, erasers, and a TA-84 calculator or other approved calculator with extra batteries. Relax and be sure to sleep. Being stressed is the worst thing you can do before a big test. Good luck. No matter the results, you'll do great. Recently, Ford Motor Company has resolved to reduce production of sedans and produce more SUVs. Here with the story is Matthew Teitelbaum. This spring, Ford will shift its focus to better selling larger SUVs and trucks compared to smaller CDs and sedans. 
This move comes as the sedan business slows down more and more, and Americans are more interested in larger cars. Sales for some larger cars, such as the Lincoln Navigator, are up 80%. In Louisville, Kentucky, shifts are being cut from Lincoln MKC and Ford Escape production. The 500 workers aren't being cut, but rather moved to another plant in Louisville to the fast-selling Lincoln Navigator and Ford Expedition. Sales for the Expedition are up 36%. In Flat Rock, Michigan, 500 people will be moved from Lincoln Continental and Mustang Muscle car plants to a plant in Livonia to increase production for the transmission of F-150s and Ranger pickup trucks. Do you prefer a larger car compared to a smaller one? Um, I actually do prefer a larger car. This is actually my car. Do you prefer a big car or a small car? I prefer big cars. You won't see Fords move until the springtime, but as the car industry and the economy are changing, car companies will have to switch up the production. I'm Matthew Teitelbaum with VHS TV News. Thank you for watching. On Thursday, former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort was sentenced to almost four years in federal prison for financial crimes. The decision came after almost a year of special counsel Robert Mueller launching an 18-count indictment against Manafort on charges related to bank and tax fraud. The jury found him guilty of eight of those counts and sentenced him to 47 months of jail time. Many are outraged at the sentencing as Manafort was originally facing up to 25 years in prison. Within the realm of politics, this month's special report gives you the scoop on the Michael Cohen congressional hearings. Josh Winslow has the story. Hi, I'm Josh Winslow and this is a quick look at the testimony of Michael Cohen, President Trump's personal attorney. For some backstory, the FBI conducted a raid of Michael Cohen's home after receiving a referral warrant from the special counsel and former Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. This was related to the Stormy Daniels payment and purposefully devaluing Trump property to pay lower taxes. In August of 2018, Michael Cohen surrendered to the FBI and pled guilty to eight criminal charges, five counts of tax evasion, one count of making false statements to a financial institution one unlawful corporate contribution, and excessive campaign contributions to influence the election. He pled guilty to lying to the Senate Intelligence Committee and House Intelligence Committee about the Trump Moscow Tower project. Michael Cohen testified in front of the House Oversight Committee on February 27, 2019. There were a lot of significant moments during his testimony. First, one of the most talked about moments was when Cohen stated, I'm ashamed because I know what Mr. Trump is. He is a racist, he is a con man, he is a cheat. After questions from Representative Debbie Wasserman Schultz, Cohen stated that President Trump had advanced knowledge of the WikiLeaks release of the DNC emails. One of the main points of debate among legal experts is the detailed documents provided that show the president signing a check to Michael Cohen after he was inaugurated. This was used to pay Cohen back for the Stormy Daniels payment, which could be considered a violation of campaign finance law. This was your brief look at the Michael Cohen testimony. I'm Josh Winslow from BHS TV News. Hello Blackhawks and welcome back to another episode of Word on the Street. I'm Parker Hasha. Word on the Street is it's National Tea for Two Day. We sat down with some fellow students and asked them to spill the tea while enjoying some ourselves. More of that to come later, but first we go to Best Cup Fogel and his predictions for the upcoming March Madness College Basketball Tournament. Best Cup? And I am Best Kept Fogel, and we are back with weather for this week. Uh, we all heard and saw the winds, polar vortex who of last week, but next week you can be expecting some really strong hammering and hitting winds from the north. They're going to be coming down all the way down. Best Kept, best, it's, uh, it's basketball, like March Madness, the tournament. It's college basketball, Best Kept. Seriously? Yeah. I, I thought you told me I was on weather. Best Kept, you're... You're wearing a Michigan jersey, dude. I could have swore this was just a gift you gave me, honest. Oh. Cut.
Hello, everybody. I'm Parker Haysha, and today I'm here with... Buscap. Grant Fogel. And today I'm here with... Christina Gould. Today I'm here with... David Abdonor. So first, we can check out what kind of tea I have today. This. This time I'll be using Hampstead Tea London Organic Mint Green. Mm. Twinnings Black Currant Black Tea. I'm going to be having the traditional medicine holiday tea, peace on earth, peppermint. I got Lipton. <laughs> My world's not yeah. this one. Mm. Well, Parker, as any legit tea drinker knows, it's more than just the tea. True. Um, it's about the scenery, mm -hmm. the warmth, um, whom you're with. All right, now we're going to play a little game on Tea for Two Day we like to call Boiling Point. It's pretty much a series of quick either-or questions that I want you to answer as honestly as possible while enjoying your tea. Are you ready, Grant? Yes. All right, here we go. First question, up or down? Up. Second question, sneakers or sandals? Sandals. Tea or coffee? Coffee. Iced coffee. I love iced coffee. <laughs> Cheetos or cheese puffs? Neither. Interesting. Elaborate. I don't like messy fingers. Tea does never give me messy fingers. Airplanes or water planes? Airplanes. Why? I've never been on a water plane. They don't exist. Yeah. <laughs> what? Okay. And last question. <laughs> yeah or nah? Yeah. Nah. Nah. And it's time for our favorite segment, Spilling the Tea. <laughs> Grant, I heard you have a pretty wild story you want to share with us. Some real good infield corresponding. Best Cap, take it away. <sighs> Hold on, sorry, I got to you all my It's fair. <sighs> I'm not sure if you heard. But I have some news for you. I was walking around the G, the G wing, and I heard some freshmen talking. Oh man, that's never good. And I heard the freshmen say, Sophie K is stopping making music. Christina. Oh my gosh, it is just, so crazy. I'm sure you have all heard of the Jordan Woods, um, Tristan drama. I got a pretty good story for you. Now, it's not a good story. It's an amazing story. <laughs> what? Apparently, she's looking to further her career in sports. What girl, what girl would cheat on their best friend's sister's boyfriend, baby, the dad of her baby? What's the story? See, it could be amazing, but it's better than that. It's a crazy story. So what's happening was, I was at my house, I was chilling with my boys, right? And then, wait, no, that's not it. Um, all the great clothing, all the great photo shoots. I don't know, Parker. You said, I'm chilling with my boys. That there, fine start to a story. But then after that, you just say nothing about what happens. No, no, it's a good story. You That was heavy stuff. Consider the tea spilled. Thank you to all of our guests for joining us and make sure to catch us next time for Word on the Street. I'm Parker Haysha. And with that, we conclude this month's edition of BHS TV News. If you have questions or suggestions, feel free to send us an email at bhstvnews at bloomfield.org. 
Tune in to This Week Today for updates on school activities. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at BHS TV News. Tune in next time for more news around the world, in your state, and in your classroom. I'm Ronnie Kane. And I'm Simon Abohasira. Thank you for watching.